Joining us now to help us get a reality check on the COVID-19 situation, especially in the race for a vaccine, is senior scholar at Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security, Dr. Amish Adalja. Dr. Adalja, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I know you've served on government panels tasked with developing guidelines for the treatment of infectious disease emergencies. And we just earlier got an update that Operation Warp Speed is on track to deliver 300 million vaccine doses to the American public by January of next year. Now, this is a massive public-private partnership. In your opinion, what is the U.S. government getting right and what, if anything, are they getting wrong? Not just in the search for the vaccine, but in fighting the virus. So when you look at Operation Warp Speed, it is something that many of us have called for for some time, having a way to procure medical countermeasures ahead of time so that we're not basically doing this on the fly and that we remove some of the financial uncertainty that many of these companies that are investing in the development of the vaccines are facing. So I do think that just the whole idea of Operation Warp Speed, of manufacturing many different candidates ahead of time before we know the final phase three results will be one way to cut down the, the time needed to scale up vaccination when the vaccine becomes available. So this is, this is a major uh, development and something that I think we all support. However, when it comes to the virus overall, I would say that the federal government has had a major problem being able to actually recognize the seriousness of this outbreak from the start, from January, February, and March, where the threat was minimized, the CDC testing guidance was flawed, the test kits were flawed, and we've been playing catch up since that time. And we continue to have attacks on expertise uh, that come from the White House, as well as uh, undermining of the CDC, which is the na nation's uh, premier public health institution. And we need the CDC to be in the driver's seat for this pandemic and for all infectious disease emergencies. Now let's talk about that big headline we woke up to earlier this week, which was Russia's claim that they've developed a vaccine. There's been a lot of criticism, but let's get into it by letting me ask you, would you personally take that vaccine? I mean, R Russia has been criticized for cutting corners and calling this Sputnik V victory. I would not take the Sputnik V vaccine at this point. I'd want to at least see phase one or phase two data. And we have not seen any peer-reviewed publications even describing the safety or the efficacy of this vaccine, even in early stage clinical development. So it really is, to me, a black box. And until we see that data, I think this is really a highly uh, speculative endeavor. I hope that nothing bad happens because we don't want any kind of missteps with the Russian experience to color people's uh, color people's. Um, uh, evaluation of other vaccines that are, that are out there. And it's going to be a major challenge to get people to take the vaccine. So any kind of safety or efficacy signal that emerges from the Russian experience uh, could be something that will be that something that the public health authorities in this country are going to have to talk to the general public about. And Dr. Fauci has expressed uh, skepticism publicly. Uh, do you share that skepticism? I do share that skepticism. We don't know anything about this vaccine other than what kind of a vaccine it is. We haven't seen phase one or phase two or animal data. It's, it's said that, that these types of data exist and that there is going to be publication, but until we see it published, until we see it peer reviewed, it's really hard to make any kind of claims about it. So I am skeptical that they, that they actually have a safe or an effective vaccine. And I just hope that they don't cause any harm to the vaccine development process as they roll this vaccine out. So, so walk us through the normal vaccine trial protocol and, and how does it normally operate and why was this Russian trial different in that sense? Well, what happens is you go through different phases of study, phase one and phase two, which you're really looking at the safety of the vaccine and does the vaccine actually induce antibodies and T-cell immunity and what side effects might you experience by getting it. And then you move to a phase three trial where you actually vaccinate a larger group of people, not just dozens or hundreds, but maybe tens of thousands. So that something that might be rare, something that might happen 1% of the time will be picked up. And you'll also see how those antibodies and how that T-cell immunity fares when a person that's vaccinated it faces the virus in the wild. That's where we actually get true efficacy. So that's where we actually know whether a vaccine works and whether it's safe. And what we know about this Russian vaccine is that they're skipping the phase three trial and they're going to do it concomitantly with actually offering it to the general public. So we don't know whether it's going to work and we don't know how safe it's going to be when you give it to large groups of, of, of a population. They say they've done phase one and phase two trials, but again, we've seen none of that data. 
Right. And there have been reports of cybersecurity breaches with relation to information on vaccine development. And when we're dealing with a global race for a vaccine like this with competing countries, do scientists anticipate espionage? Because there had been a lot of talk of, of international cooperation when it comes to COVID. There has been some reports of industrial espionage going on with this vaccine or with other countermeasures for coronavirus. And I think that's something that we have to answer and think about because we're, we're in a world where everybody is trying to get a vaccine and some of this is industrial secrets or, or proprietary information. And we know that there are countries that, that have the ability to be able to hack this information and try and duplicate it and replicate it. So I do think that this is an important question, especially as we know that this vaccine is very similar to, for example, the AstraZeneca vaccine being developed uh, by Oxford University. And how confident are you that the January date for a U.S. vaccine would be one that you would be comfortable taking based on the data that you've seen thus far? Well, the U.S. vaccines, we have seen robust phase one and phase two data. I'm waiting to see phase three data. Those trials are starting now. And I do think if we get through phase three successfully with a good safety signal as well as efficacy against the virus in the wild, I think this would be something that I would recommend people to take. And there are people now enrolling in clinical trials, but it's all very transparent all with informed consent. So I do think this is very different than what we're seeing in Russia. And I do think that the United States and the United Kingdom and other countries will develop safe and effective vaccines that can be given to the population. And that will be one way that we finally exit this pandemic. And so that's my next question about exiting the pandemic. Not if, but when there is a vaccine, there is concern that COVID will never simply go away given the lack of a perfect match. Do you think that's the case or is, is this just gonna be our new reality of having COVID, some strains of it still out there? I do think that COVID is going to be with us. This is a virus that transmits very efficiently from people. It's established itself in the human population. A vaccine will keep it under control, but I don't think it will be eradicated from the planet. Uh, remember, we've only eradicated one human disease from the planet, and it's not something that we can even do for, for measles. So I do think that this virus is going to be with us, but I think it will be much less of a threat when we have a vaccine that people can avail themselves of. Well, Dr. Amesh Adalja, thank you so much for your time and for all your perspective. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.